Well, hi everyone. Let's go through what we can here for this um, practice test. Now, remember we have two choices for harmonic motion. D equals A sine omega T or D equals A cosine omega T. Alright, so the displacement equals zero, t equals zero. Now, this means it's going through the origin, which is a sine function. And this is a omega, we have to figure out, is, well, the period is two pi over omega. So three equals two pi over omega over omega and I think I can just switch these two around and omega would equal 2 pi over 3. So D equals the amplitude 7 times the sine of 2 pi over 3 T. I'm going to figure out omega here. 2.5 equals 2 pi over omega. Omega is 2 pi over 2.5. <coughs> I'd rather see integer values here, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2 and have omega equal 4 pi over 5. So, this time, displacement is 4 at t equals 0. The amplitude is also 4. So this time, we're going to use cosine, because cosine is the one that kind of starts at four, uh, 0, 4. And omega is 4 pi over 5. Now on this one, maximum displacement, that is the amplitude, the frequency is the is the reciprocal of the um, period. Now the period is 2 pi over omega, which is 12 pi. So this period is 1 sixth. And the frequency, so 1 sixth, in 1 sixth of a second, it goes through a cycle. So it goes through 6 cycles per second. And these seconds here. And I'm using seconds here. So the value of D when T equals 6. So D equals 1 fourth. Okay, I got two cosines in there. Typo. 12 times pi times 6. So it's 1 fourth times the cosine of 72 pi. That's going around a lot of times. And I think we're going to find that that is one-fourth of whatever unit we're using there. Okay. I think if you just take one-fourth times cosine of 72 pi, make sure you're in radians, you're going to get one-fourth times one here. Because um, the cosine, it's the same as... it's. Co it's a coterminal angle with 2 pi. 72 pi and 2 pi are coterminal angles. So the least positive value, now we're doing cosine here. I like to graph to answer this question. One period takes one sixth of a second. Half of a sixth is a twelfth. 
half of a twelfth. So this is the first time that d is zero is one twenty-fourth. So it's one twenty-fourth of a second. All right. Now, for four through seven, find the exact value of each. Okay, I am not sure why I have two of those in there, but the arc sine of square root of three over two. I don't think I downloaded this properly before I printed it. So the arc sine of square root of three over two. All right, now I might actually give you a copy of you, the unit circle and let you fill that out and then give it to me but now square root of 3 over 2 now the sine sine is over here or arc sine is over here inverse sine so if I'm at square root of 3 over 2 I'm up here that is pi over 3. Now, let me do a little investigating here. Alright. This one is actually the inverse tangent of square root of 3 over 3. So, we need the exact value of that. So, if I were to take one half over square root of three over two, the halves would cancel out here. So, that's one over square root of three. And if I rationalize the denominator, I get square root of three over three. Okay, just checking. So this is sine, and this is cosine. So where's the sine one half, and the cosine square root of three over two? And I think it's right here. So I'm going to say that this is equal to pi over six. All right, this is not showing up correctly. Okay. Inverse tangent of the tangent of 11 pi over 6 is what we're doing. Now, we could write 11 pi over 6 because the inverse tangent and tangent cancel out. But that's not a proper answer. That is not in the range for inverse tangent. Okay, but if you remember where it's coterminal, this is 11 pi over 6 here, The it goes from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So this is actually negative. 11 pi over 6 is right here. So this is negative pi over 6 is the best answer there. All right, now the secant of the arctangent of three fifths. Now, on this one, I would be real tempted to just draw the triangle. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. All right, and for this angle, if I if I'm drawing this here, the opposite side of theta here is the y coordinate. The adjacent side is the x coordinate. I didn't draw the scale, obviously. Um, and the hypotenuse is kind of what I'm going to need, I think. So 3 squared plus 4. 5 squared equals r squared, and that's 9 and 25, that's 34. So the square root of 34 here. Okay, I'm not sure why I went negative there. Okay, 
I really, this is five here, this is three here, here's theta here, and this is square root of 34. Okay, none of those are negative, I don't think. Yeah, those are all positive, so let me get rid of this part right here. And I'll put the five down outside of that triangle. Okay, and this is my theta that I'm looking at. Um, secant is a reciprocal of cosine, so that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So hypotenuse over adjacent is the square root of 34 over 5 for that one. All right. Let's take a look at some word problems here. Nautical word problems. All right, she, ship leaves port at 6 a.m. and has a bearing of north 29 degrees east. So I'm going to draw a port. The ship sails at 25 knots, which is 25 nautical miles per hour. All right, how many nautical miles north and how many nautical miles east will the ship have traveled by 10 a.m.? So, for four hours, it will have gone at 25 nautical miles per hour. For four hours, it would go 100 nautical miles. And, let's see, off of north, we are going 29 degrees east. So I'm going to draw a 29 degree angle right here, and that is 100 nautical miles. And we are asked how many miles north, and I'm going to, I'm going to draw my, I'm going to draw this right triangle here. Or I could use this one. Okay. I think I'll just leave, leave it like this. Okay. How many miles north and how many miles east is that? So, um, that's 29 degrees. This is the hypotenuse. The north, I would use adjacent. So that's cosine of 29 degrees is equal to n over 100. So if I multiply by 100, now I've got to make sure now that I am in radians, not radians, I've got to make sure I'm in degrees now because these navigation problems are all in degrees. Okay, so, so I can quit. All right, I'm going to multiply both sides by 100. 100 times cosine of 29. eighty seven point four six so eighty seven point four six miles north and then we'll solve for the east you can use Pythagorean theorem with the eighty seven point four six here or I think I'll just use sine opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of 29 degrees is equal to east over 100. Now multiply by 100. This is nautical miles, I should say. And I'm seeing is 
48.48 nautical miles east. Now at 10 a.m., so now we gotta we gotta look at this, and it goes due north. So we know we got this from north. We go 29 degrees here, and then it's going to go. Find the ship's bearing and distance at noon from the port. It's going to go due north, which is going to go straight up for two hours at 25 nautical miles per hour. So this is this is 100, and this is 50, and we want to know what. This is straight from here to here. So I'm going to kind of extend this. I already know, we're going to do north. I already know the east. I already know this is 48.48 mile, nautical miles, nautical miles. I know this is 150. That's 150. No, it's not. This is the hundred here. Okay, what I do know is this north is 87.46 nautical miles. So the total is 50 and 87. That's 137.46 nautical miles. All right, so we have a right triangle, and I'm going to kind of redraw that now without this just from port here we got this right triangle this is 48.48 miles nautical miles this is 137.46 nautical miles all right and this is that distance okay I'm going to use Pythagorean Theorem there. This is D here. 48.48 squared plus 137.46 squared is equal to D squared. Okay, 48.48 squared plus 137.46 squared okay that's two one two four five point five six two d squared I gotta take the square root of that I'm getting 145.76, 145.76 nautical miles. Now I'm going to go for this angle here, this angle theta, um, and then opposite over adjacent, so the tangent of theta is 137.46 over 48.48 which is and then I'm going uh, theta I'm going to take the inverse tangent of both sides here and theta would be the inverse tangent of 137.46 over 48.48 second tangent, inverse tangent 
137.46 divided by 48.48 is a 70.57 degrees. Okay, I guess I haven't really been communicating what I plan to do with that. This is 70.57 degrees. To get the bearing, we come off the north. So I'm going to take 90. These are complementary angles. 90 minus 70.57. And that is 19.43. So it is off of north. 19.43 degrees east. This is the bearing. And this is the distance. Alright, let's see what we got next here. Alright. An airplane is 250 miles north and 115 miles west of an airport. The pilot wants to fly directly to the airport. What bearing should the pilot take? All right, let's draw. Let's draw the airport right here, and let's draw the airplane 250 miles north. 250 on the other side. And 115 miles west. Okay. And here is the plane. Stay A for Okay. I don't know that that works very well. All right. So the bearing, what I really want to do is find this angle first, and then we'll deal with the bearing. But you got a right triangle, you got the opposite, you got the adjacent. So the tangent theta is that's 50, right? 250 over 115. Theta is the inverse tangent of 250 over 115. Um, second tangent. 250 divided by 115. I'm seeing 65, I'm going to go 65.3 degrees approximately. Okay, now if I'm going, if I'm doing bearings here, I'm going off of north and my angle for that direction is this way. The, um, so that is 90 degrees plus the 65 degrees. So our bearing, dang, Okay, is 155.3 degrees. The bearing is different when we're just talking in an um, aviation sense. All right. Let's pick up with this. Number 11, use the conditions. Let's make sure everything's okay here. Use the condition secant of u equals negative 3 halves and tangent of u is greater than 0. To find all six trig functions. Alright, so I'm going to just make a list here. Secant of u is negative 3 halves. I'm going to go ahead and put cosine of u equals negative 2 thirds. Um, I might, since I have cosine now, 
instead of using the secant, I'm going to use Pythagorean trig identity, which is, I'm going to use this one since I have cosine now. Sine squared u plus cosine squared u is equal to 1. And sine squared u is equal to plus negative 2 thirds squared is equal to 1. Sine squared u plus 4 ninths is equal to 1. Sine squared u will equal to 1 minus 4 ninths is 5 ninths. And square root plus or minus the sine of u is plus or minus 5 square root of 5 over 3. Now I need to look at this. Tangent's positive. Um, cosine is negative, which means the sine, sine over cosine, means the sine also has to be negative. So the sine of u is the negative square root of 5 over 3, which means cosecant u is equal to negative 3, whoops, yeah, 3 over radical 5, and so I'll multiply top and bottom by square root of 5 over 5. So that's negative 3 radical 5 over 5, and I need to get tangent. Tangent of u is sine of u over cosine of u. So negative radical 5 over 3 over cosine negative 2 thirds. So I am going to take negative square root of 5 over 3 times negative 3 halves. Those 3's will cancel. Negative times negative is positive. Square root of 5 over 2. That is tangent of u. Square root of 5 over 2. Cotangent of u. Let's switch that around. Mm, rationalize the denominator. It looks like we're going to get 2 radical 5 over 5. Alright. I have no idea from my paper what 12 is, but alright. So, sine x cosine squared x minus sine x. We're going to try to simplify that. And I think I will, I'm going to factor out sine of x from this term and this term. And I'll have sine of x times cosine squared x minus 1. Now, I got up here sine squared sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. I'm going to actually sub that in, see what happens um, after I solve for it. So subtract sine squared x from both sides. So cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. I'm going to put this in here. So I'm looking at sine x times 1 minus sine squared x minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So I've got sine of x times negative sine squared x. which is negative sine cubed x. I think that's pretty simple, if it's needing simplified. All right, 13, I'm pretty sure that is not the problem. OK, cosecant squared x minus cotangent x minus 3.
right, and I don't have the, um, <clears throat> don't have the things right in front of me, the um, identities. So I'm going to derive what the uh, Pythagorean identity based on sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. I want I want um, cosecant squared. So I'm going to divide by sine squared x. So I'll have cosecant here and divide this whole thing by sine squared x. And that's one. Cosine over sine is cotangent squared x. And that's equal to cosecant squared x. So I'm going to plug that in for that. 1 plus cotangent squared x minus 1 plus cotangent squared x minus cotangent x minus 3. 1 minus 3. So cotangent squared x minus cotangent x 1 minus 3 minus 2. Now, if it's easier, we can let u equal cotangent x, and then you're factoring u squared minus u minus 2, which is u what, minus 2 and u plus 1. So we're just factoring, so I'll put cotangent x back in. Cotangent x minus 2 times cotangent x plus 1. It is factored. All right, pretty sure that's not 14. Sine x plus cotangent x cosine x. All right, I'm going to this time rewrite cotangent of x as cosine x over sine x. times cosine x. Okay. And I've got sine of x plus cosine squared x over sine of x. I think what I want to try to do here is make this into one fraction. And the common denominator would be sine of x. So I'm going to multiply this by sine x over sine x. And what I have is sine squared x over sine x plus cosine squared x over sine x is equal to sine squared x plus cosine squared x over sine x. And I do recall that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So this is 1 over sine x. So this thing is equal to cosecant x. All right, now number 15, I am pretty certain I need to look at that. All right, so what do we got? We got sine theta from the addition and simplify over 1 plus cosine theta. plus cosine theta over sine theta. I apologize for this, guys. All right. I am going to actually Okay. 
I need common denominator, which is 1 plus cosine theta times sine theta. This one does not have sine theta on it, so I'm going to go sine theta and sine theta. And I'm going to multiply this one by 1 plus cosine theta and 1 plus cosine theta. And so I've got sine squared theta plus cosine theta plus cosine squared theta over sine theta times 1 plus cosine theta. And I'm going to rearrange this is sine squared theta, I'm just leaving this in its factored form right now, plus cosine squared theta plus cosine theta over sine theta times 1 plus cosine theta, it's factored. Now I am using it again, sine squared theta plus cosine theta squared theta is 1, so that's 1 plus cosine theta in the numerator, and it's sine theta times 1 plus cosine theta in the denominator, and I'm going to cancel that and that, and make that 1 over sine theta, oh, deja vu, and that's cosecant theta.